Won't You Be My Neighbor, the Focus Features documentary about the beloved children's television host Fred Rogers continues to rack up a list of accomplishments as it prepares to cross the $20 million threshold at the US box office. In the next few days, director Morgan Neville's film will become one of only about a dozen or so other documentaries to reach this milestone. Meanwhile, it's already the top earning documentary in five years and the 14th biggest of all time, including big studio nature movies not adjusting for inflation. Won't You Be My Neighbor, which opened in June, has also become the top grossing biographical doc of all time domestically after passing the $8.4 million made by Amy, the 2015 film chronicling the life and death of Amy Winehouse. A year ago, it seems like you couldn't pay people to go see documentaries in theaters. There were a bunch of big acquisitions at Sundance in 2017, but nothing did so well, Neville tells The Hollywood Reporter. People thought the market for documentaries was extinct. The top grossing doc last year, excluding Disney's family-friendly nature film Born in China, was I Am Not Your Negro, Raoul Peck's portrait of author James Baldwin, which attracted $7.1 million, while Al Gore's an inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power, topped out at just $3.7 million domestically. A decade earlier, An Inconvenient Truth won the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature and grossed $24.1 million in summer 2006, putting the former vice president back on the map. At one point, it almost looked like the most talked about docs were migrating away from the theaters as the last two films to win the Oscar for Best Feature Documentary were seen primarily on the small screen, Netflix's Icarus and ESPN's OJ Made in America. Says Neville, who won the Oscar for Best Documentary for his 2013 film 20 Feet from Stardom, we thought that if our film did anything close to $10 million, it would be a home run. RBG, Betsy West and Julie Cohen's film about US Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has likewise found box office success, earning $13.1 million to date for Magnolia and Participant Media as it winds down its theatrical run. Meanwhile, Tim Wardle's Three Identical Strangers has earned more than $5 million in its first month for the filmmakers and indie distributor Neon. The doc recounts the harrowing story of Robert Shaffron, Edward Galland, and David Kelman, triplets who were adopted by separate families as part of a scientific experiment. The three brothers were unaware of each other's existence until a random encounter brought them together. Box office observers believe Won't You Be My Neighbor could gross $22 to $25 million by the end of its box office run, on par with such hits as Michael Moore's 2012 Oscar winner Bowling for Columbine, which brought in $21.6 million when adjusted for inflation. But they note that instead of being political broadsides like bowling, both Won't You Be My Neighbor and RBG offer positive messages in a tumultuous world. According to Focus President of Distribution Lisa Bunnell, Won't You Be My Neighbor has become a phenomenon. It's cathartic. As Neville, documentaries in general are telling the types of complex adult stories that aren't getting told in Hollywood very often anymore. They are contagious. Not all summer docs are scoring huge numbers though. Kevin McDonald's Whitney, which looks at the turbulent life and tragic death of Whitney Houston, has earned a more modest $2.8 million to date for roadside attractions, while Pope Francis, a man of his word, topped out at $1.8 million. In summer 2004, Moore's documentary Fahrenheit 9-11 made box office history when it grossed $190 million at the summer box office to become the top grossing doc of all time domestically, a record it still holds. The following June, another doc made a big splash when Warner Independence March of the Penguins marched to an impressive $77.4 million to become the second biggest documentary domestically. In the intervening years, only a handful of docs have been able to break out and most were either concert picks or political offerings from Moore or his conservative arch nemesis Dinesh D'Souza. The two will soon be battling it out yet again at the box office with D'Souza's Death of a Nation, designed to draw parallels between Abraham Lincoln and Donald Trump, opening nationwide August 3rd. Meanwhile, on September 21st, Moore's latest project, Fahrenheit 11.9, opens and will, of course, take a much more critical look at Trump. For the moment though, moviegoers are opting to embrace the uplifting messages offered by Mr. Rogers and says Neville, anybody who says they aren't surprised by how well our film is done is lying. To read more on this story, head to THR.com. For The Hollywood Reporter News, I'm Lindsay Rodriguez.